Hey listeners, it's Paul Andriola here. Why not join our community at Small Cap Discoveries where we offer our members direct access to some of the best microcap investment opportunities available. Our members are getting access to premium microcap financings, research reports, and direct access to management. Sign up today at www.smallcapdiscoveries.com. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Small Cap Discoveries conference call. Today on our call, we have the CEO, Cameron Watt, uh, back from InTouch Insight for an update. InTouch trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol INX and on the OTC under INXSF. The company is currently trading at 55 cents with roughly 25 and a half million shares outstanding or about a $14 million market cap. I'd now like to hand it over to Paul Andriola. Hey, thanks, Trevor. Um, great to have Cameron back. It's been well over a year, I think, since we last spoke. Um, so it's uh, good to have you back. It's it's also good timing because you just come off a pretty decent quarter, which I'd love to talk about. Um, so we'll we'll dive right into it, Cameron. Um, before we sort of get into any sort of the updates, why don't you remind everybody what uh, in, uh, in Touch Insights all about? Sure. So we we are a, uh, a data capture company at our core. Uh, we specialize in customer experience management and measurement. Uh, you know, I, I was on my cocktail party discussion with somebody said, "What do you guys do?" Uh, is you know, we make sure that when you go out to eat, when you go out to a movie, when you go to a theater, when you go you know, to a hotel, when you go out in the world, interact with people. Our job is to work with those businesses to make sure that you have a better time as a customer, become a more loyal customer than you would have been out in the world had we not been working with those businesses to help them. And we do that through services where we actually go physically check on service in locations and check on execution and standard in locations. And we also do it through software. We have software for voice to customer program, uh, you know, akin to a Qualtrics for those people. Uh, and we also have operational checklist software where you can use our software to do your internal form checklist, take pictures, annotate that kind of thing. So we have a combination of, of software and services uh, we do all kinds of cool things out there. Uh, we audit pharmaceutical reps in their homes to make sure they're carrying the right drugs. Um, mm. You know, we we actually go and do some work with a, uh, I'm not allowed to say the name, but it's a, let's just say it's a large company that does a lot of mapping. Uh, and we go out and make sure that the pins on those maps when you're on your devices are more accurate uh, than they would have been if we'd not been going to check on some things. So we, we, we really, at our, at our core, we are a data capture and analytics company. Uh, with reporting and uh, we just do it through services and software and we specialize in that customer experience side fantastic well like i said you, you had a pretty decent quarter i see revenues were up 38 percent in this last quarter um you know nicely profitable for a company your size um what uh what can you um you know what's the reason for that uh, improvement improvement comes obviously there's really three or four different prongs to it I mean, the first uh, is obviously we did an acquisition. We closed for C level HX on October 1st of 2021. So we were overlapping that. Uh, we also are continuing to bring new programs back and recover from the pandemic, uh, where all of our customers or most of our customers, frankly, uh, shut the doors for a period of time. So we're, we're continuing to bring programs back from that. Uh, and then we, and then we have net new. We have a number of new logos uh, that we've signed. We've had some, uh, some cool new programs that we've done. Uh, we did a great project, uh, and you know, we listed as one-time revenue in Q2 uh, around uh, you know lidar technology, using our feet on the street to collect again. We, we can collect any kind of data, so we used lidar to collect data. Had a pretty cool project there for a video game company. Um, you know, so really, it's been a combination of of all of all three of those, uh, you know, to get where we where we are from a growth standpoint. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I see you sort of giving guidance. You're 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 talking about a 40 to 50 percent uh, revenue improvement this year. Yeah. Um, generally, what is causing that? You mentioned the acquisition, but is there any other um, sort of trends or anything you're seeing uh, now again that we're out of the pandemic? What what's improving and helping your business? Well, I think obviously the acquisition and obviously the you know, but, but I, I think the broader picture you know is helping is that we have you know customers who more than ever have to know what's going on with their customers. You know, customer expectations have changed. You know, what somebody might have found important before the pandemic, before the doors closed and after the doors open has dramatically shifted in many ways, plus all of the new channels of distribution. Look at the usage of apps for third-party delivery, right? Look at curbside pickup. 
you know, and, and these aren't at like niche players. I mean, 7-Eleven has, 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 has test stores for things. Taco Bell has a, a, a store they open with only drive throughs It's like, a, it basically a, the restaurant sits above ground mm-hmm. and it's got a bunch of drive through lanes running underneath it. You know, um, we've got a, 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 you know, we've got so many people out there trying so many things. I don't care if it's Burger King or McDonald's or who they are. Everyone's trying something new out there because we've got all these new channels of distribution and we've got all these new customer expectations. And all these new ways to, to to interact in the world since the pandemic started. You know, as, as I was saying, you know, a year and a half, two years ago, we had to go from boardroom ideas, right, to execution in many of these businesses in a matter of months. You know, uh, the, the concept of having curbside pickup and operationally ready for it, or having third party delivery or first party delivery, those were all ideas being bantered around while well, mm-hmm. they had to be operationalized immediately when the pandemic hit. So people are catching up to that and people need data now, right? These customers all need data. They need to know what's working, what's not working. Is any of this degrading my brand? Is it helping how people feel about me? Is it hurting how people feel? About me? Is it increasing loyalty? Is it decreasing oil? Right? What are all of these changes that have gone on in my business, in the space, in the environment? What is it doing to my business and my loyalty? And how do I react? How do I improve? How do I guarantee my success and my growth going forward? And you need data. You need good information to do that. And I think that that is, people are waking up to that. People are realizing that. And that's causing the restart of not just old programs, but also new customers and new programs with existing customers. And people starting to go, hey, we need to know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Well, you sort of touch on uh, sort of my next question is, um, what what are you seeing? Are you seeing existing customers sort of grow their spend or are you seeing a lot more new customers? I'm assuming it's both, but wh- where do you see the bigger growth? We're seeing bigger growth from new customers right now, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. Um, we, we have, you know, uh, probably because we had pretty good programs with our existing customers before. Uh, mm-hmm. We are seeing increased spend, obviously. We are seeing people buy something they weren't buying before in terms of maybe someone picking up software now they weren't using and things like that. Uh, mm-hmm. But from a pure growth standpoint, we're seeing more traction right now from just net new logos. Mm-hmm. Now, one question we always like to ask uh, companies is um, what, what sort of new products or initiatives are you guys uh, implementing? What, what's what's new with your business right now? Um, you know, we are focused primarily on the data side of it, on the analytics mm-hmm. side. But right now, from a new standpoint, uh, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel on the collection side of it. We are focused on the on the downstream, on the analytics side. You know, things like getting key performance uh, analysis, key driver analysis, things like having that done in real time. You know, things like anomaly detection. You know, those th- things where you know automated you know insights, let's call them, right? where our platform mines the data, finds things, and then notifies the right people at the right time for them to take action. That's where we're focused right now. A lot of our product focus. Um, in addition, of course, to just uh, like we did with the LiDAR project, we're working on, we're, we're currently working on something else, hopefully it's next year, which will work out, which is a similar type of idea, which is, you know, taking our core assets, which are and our core skills, which is just collecting data from all over North America, all at once, you know, in a chaotic managed environment mm-hmm. uh, to get really good information from somebody. How do we find ways to do that that are different? So we are mm-hmm. looking at new and different ways to capture data. Um, but in the traditional ways we've captured it, we're pretty good at it, and we're focused on that downstream. Mm-hmm. Now, um, you, your balance sheet. I see that you've got you've got just over a million dollars in cash now. You know, you made your acquisition uh, a little while ago. Um, what? And I suspect you're going to be adding more cash to the balance sheet. I'm just trying to get a sense. What What happens next? Are you still on the M and A prowl, um, or you know, what's going to happen with that cash if you're not? I like the description of prowl. It makes me, you know, it makes, <laughs> gives, gives me a, a nice aggressive feel. Um, you know what? We have stated for many years, and it, and it hasn't changed, that we will continue to do opportunistic acquisition. You know, we are, we're not on a roll-up strategy where we're willing mm-hmm. to just pay silly multiples for things just for the sake of growth. Um, but we absolutely are interested in doing additional acquisitions. Um, but they need to make sense. They need to make mm-hmm. sense for the shareholders, right? They can't be del- massively dilutive. They can't. Uh, hurt the balance sheet and, and put us in a situation where we have to, you know, worry about the future or cash flows, things like that. 
Uh, we have tried as much as possible not to dilute. We've tried as much as possible not to take on too much debt. You know, we have tried as much as possible to be very uh, strong financial stewards. And, you know, we've look, we, we bootstrapped a software company out of our cash flow from the services company. You know, mm-hmm. um, I mean, the compound annual growth, you know, over the last five years, it was 25% on our software. Business. So, um, you know, we've done that without raising hundreds mm-hmm. of millions of dollars, right? Without having two million outstanding shares. You know, uh, yeah. and we're going to continue to manage the business in that way, which is very financially responsible, but still focused on growth and reinvesting in growth. And acquisitions are part of that strategy. You know, mm. uh, am I hoping to find something that makes sense for, for us and for the acquiree? 100 percent. We're, we're continuing to look for those opportunities. Mm-hmm. And Cameron, what, um, you know, what, what challenges are you facing uh, with the business right now? Um, we come out of pandemic, you know, the, the business has certainly changed, but uh, what are you seeing as, as uh, your challenges? You know, our challenges, uh, Paul, are no different than everybody else's. Labor is the biggest. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, it, it, labor is, uh, and I was talking actually with a hotel ch- uh, chain just the other day about this. Uh, I was meeting with the with the general manager there, and you know, neither of us can figure out why in 2019 there were people lined up to do work, and in 2022 nobody wants to do work. Mm-hmm. You know, I, not nobody. I, we can't. I, I can't tell you why all of a sudden, you know, the cost and the availability has just dramatically shifted. I, I can't tell you why. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, we all know the little reasons here and there. But the magnitude of the change and how long it's held on just doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. So we're all navigating our way through that. Now, are we finding new people? Of course, you know. But it's increased. The, it's increased the, the need to recruit. It's increased the cost, right? Um, you know, we 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 have to shift a lot of our focus towards how we deal with that situation. Because remember, we do, we have tens of thousands of people who collect data who mm-hmm. do have data capture, right? It's not like you got. I'm not just talking about trying to find a a new developer, a person in marketing, or, you know, I'm talking about tens of thousands of people that we need to do work every month and, uh, and they're not as available as they once mm-hmm. were. So, mm-hmm. but we're, we're, we're getting through it. I mean, obviously we're getting our work done. We're doing, we're, we're not, I'm not, we're not, it's not something that is a, is a barrier, but it's a, it's a concern. It's definitely been one of the things after the pandemic that has caused us some consternation over on this side. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're getting through it we're, and we're adapting. We're coming up with new ways. You know, it's the, uh, it's the change or perish, right? You mm-hmm. can do one or the other usually. So we're so we're changing, we're adapting. We had a great team, very flexible, and we're we're getting it done. But that's probably the biggest thing: is labor shortage. Uh, mm-hmm. The second thing, of course, would be this whole you know uh, inflation area situation, mm-hmm. you know, with the associated bear market, um, and what that does, you know, is it affects our customers, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and to the extent our customers are having their budgets cut or they're having people question how much they're spending or they're, they're pulling in their horns, it affects how much they're willing to tip to risk on programs too. Now we've held our own because again, as I spoke earlier, we're, we're almost becoming a bit of an essential service right now for many of them. Uh, but still, it, it might stop that extra program, right? Mm-hmm. It might, it might stop that, that, oh, we were going to try this, but maybe we'll wait another year and see what happens in the market, you know, approach to some of the stuff that we're, mm-hmm. that we're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so it, it, it is just, you know, whatever you have, in, you know, inflation, labor shortages, you know, mm-hmm. bear market. I mean, it, all the fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's all the things that everybody else is worried about is what, sure. we, what we're dealing with. Yeah. And one question I should have asked earlier, um, like, how do you how do you approach and how do you market to a new customer? How do you go grab a, a new paying customer? Well, we do it a number of ways. Um, you know, one of the things that we have been relying on more of late is our industry leadership. So we are partnered with uh, major publications as well as uh, companies in the uh, QSR space, for example. Uh, there was a QSR, uh, QSR magazine just this fall, uh, October, put out a drive through study, uh, which was our study. And we were named at it and had links and everything to it. Um, you know, I, I do a speech out with leadership conference for the petrol convenience industry every year. And we do a big study around that. We give out a customer experience award in conjunction with Winsight Media, the people who own that that that, uh, that conference and publications. Uh, so you know we do we do a, we're doing a bunch of things in our in some of our key verticals. We're doing a lot of stuff around thought leadership, where mm-hmm. we're out in the media, where we're getting earned media as opposed to you know fighting with everybody on paper click is just very expensive. Mm-hmm. You know, 
Um, so we're doing a lot of earned media. We're doing a lot of thought leadership. Um, throughout the pandemic, for example, even when we didn't have any revenue coming in from our customers or from most of our customers for a while there, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, we were down 70% in revenue in Q2 of 2020. Um, you know, even during that time, we did studies, we did surveys, and we gave that information um, uh, back to all of our customers that were, even though they weren't paying us at the time, to tell them how customers were feeling, how co what customers were thinking, what customers were worried about. And at the time, we were checking on everything from masks to hand sanitizer to standing in line to, you know, we were, we, we were doing these surveys and, and studies, and we were feeding it back to people. So we, we've really taken on a, a real approach of being partners and being industry experts and being thought of as industry leaders. Uh, one of the programs we're in field with right now from a big brand new logo, I can't tell you who it is, but it's it's a it's a seven figure program that we're in the field mm -hmm. with, you know, and it's we got that business because of our thought leadership of the study. They were like, you know, they came to us because why wouldn't you? They're the mm -hmm. experts, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so yeah, I I think that that's really paying off. And of course, do we have paper clips out there? Yes. Do we, you know, do we have all the Google AdWords and do we have a marketing team that goes and does these things? And, and, and yes. And do we have salespeople whose job is it to pick up the phone and engage with people? Yes. Do we do drip campaigns and email marketing to people in the right positions in our target companies? Of course. So yes, we do those things. Uh, but what we, what we, what we're finding is really helping those things be successful is just being experts and being partners in industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, you know, we uh, in the the markets for for nano caps, you know, micro caps, nano caps uh, has been pretty challenging over the last little while. One of the questions we're asking CEOs of companies such as yours, is just you know, what what are you hearing? What are you seeing? Are, are investors calling you? Is is there anybody out there that's picking up the phone and and looking at you guys from the investment standpoint? I mean, I have to be careful what I answer here for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, first of all, 100%, uh, you know, microcap being down as much as it's down, you know, uh, the good news for me, I guess, is that I get to have conversations that kind of go as follows. Um, hey, you guys aren't down. Great job. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm not, not sure how much of a pat on the back that is, but the honest truth is, is that we've held our own uh, yeah. in a market where people are, you know, on average down I don't know, 40%, depending on which place you look at. So, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we, we've held our own, and I think we've held our own because of the our, our strong, you know, results. Um, having said that, uh, you know, we do need to start doing some investor relations work again, which we put on hold with the pandemic, and we have not restarted anything on it in terms of communication from our side. Uh, we are going to start doing some of that in 2023 on a limited basis um, while still being budget conscious. Uh, and at the end of the day, um, the numbers speak for themselves. I mean, mm -hmm. we are. I have forecasted, you know, uh, somewhere between, you know, you know, getting bumping up towards $24 million in revenue. If you look at 40, 50 set growth, right? We're trading at, I think your, your, your guy mentioned earlier, Trevor mentioned earlier, 14 million. Mm -hmm. So we are not trading in a multiple. We are trading in a fraction of revenue. Mm -hmm. And that includes, by the way, a software business with over $100,000 in MRR to major logos that's embedded in there, right? Um, so, you know, it's just, the numbers just don't make any sense, mm -hmm. right? They just don't make any sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're profitable, by the way. We're not burning, we're not burning money. We're, we don't, yeah. we, we're, not, we're not raising, we're not diluting. Right? There's just no rational reason for the current pricing, except that the market itself is currently feeling a certain sure. way. And so at some point, people are going to wake up and look at our situation. You know, in fact, just the other day, BMO Investor Line, which is a fairly well-known organization, you know, moved us to a buy rate. Okay. Um, I didn't even know they were looking at us. <laughs> never, never, never mind enough to change your rating, you know. Yeah. So look. I, I think that the numbers speak for themselves. I think that, you know, at some point people are going to figure it out. We'll, we'll start our communication, you know, after the holidays. Mm -hmm. We'll start getting the word out there too. And, um, and, and I've, I've got this belief, and I've said this before. I probably said it when we, when we met a couple of years ago, Paul. You know, you can either be really hyper-focused on your stock price, um, mm -hmm. or you can be really hyper-focused on making your company worth a lot of money. Um, 
And if you're focused on that stock price, you'll probably get it. Uh, how long term is it? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know, how many people get this point along the way? I don't know. If yeah. you're focused though on just creating real value in the actual organization itself, I have this belief, however naive, that you can go get it. Mm-hmm. You know, that you can go get that value. Uh, mm-hmm. Like one of the questions you asked was, well, are people sniffing around stuff? You know, I have people call sometimes who want to take a serious position like that. Okay. But then I explain to them that to do so, you can't pay 55 cents. You know, that it's much higher. It's, all, it's not 60 cents either, mm-hmm. you know. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, look at how many shares are trading for that. You know, sure. you, you want to buy a real position. Now you have to take shares away from somebody who understands the value. And mm-hmm. they don't, they're not going to sell it to you. Right. You know, you, you, and, 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 and so the, the underlying value is there. We just have to, you know, we just have to get a little the ball farther down the field. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Um, looking forward. Um, so 2023 is just a, just about on us here. Um, what, what should investors sort of look out for? Maybe catalysts or just general trends? What do you think uh, the business looks like in 2023? You know, 2023 is going to be, we're expecting, and as I've stated, we're expecting it to be better than 2022 from a revenue standpoint. Um, do I think Q1 is going to light it up? I, not necessarily. Uh, you know, we, we have, there's always a growth curve. There's always, you know, you always have traction and you, you get some mm-hmm. going and you got to, you know, it, 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 things go up and down, right? That's how it works. Mm-hmm. Um, am I really optimistic about 2023? Yeah, as you know, as I stated in my MDNA, uh, we're expecting additional growth. You know, we're not, we're not even, even though there's a bear market and the world is falling apart and all those things that are going on, uh, we don't expect to retract. You know, we expect to, at the end of the t- day, to go forward. Uh, you know, the path to get there, what I would say to investors is, you know, the path may not be straight line. You know, if you're looking for monthly growth and you're looking for quarterly consistency, well, that's not the world that we live in. Mm-hmm. Um, but year over year, you know, the, the path is not a straight line, the jagged edge sometimes, but but that's but the but the trajectory, if you map it right, is mm-hmm. good and we expect it to remain pretty good. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Um, Cameron, I'm sort of done with my questions. Um, always like to give you an opportunity to sort of give a parting message. What what do you want to make sure that all the investors that are listening today I really walk away with uh, knowing about the business. Uh, that they should probably buy more stock because it's a great deal, you know, at at, at, lo- at the higher numbers. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I'm saying it a bit facetiously, but I'm not. I mean, mm-hmm. I own just under 10% of the company, uh, 9.9, I mean, and the reason is that I, the way I'm holding my stock, which involves a lot of tax-free vehicles, I'm not allowed to go more than that or I get in trouble, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, or I, or I would have been probably buying even more at one point, but I, the only reason I sell periodically is just to stay below that line when I when I do buy an option and things and then I have to sell and mm-hmm. you know you, you know the cycle I got the government yeah. to worry about uh, yeah. but I do believe it's a, just a I, it's a great company it's a, it's a great buy I always tell people if you're looking for something that you can buy and you know within a couple months go make a bunch of money in your day trader yeah that's probably not yeah. Us. Yeah. you know if if you're looking for somewhere that you know you're saying hey you know what there's probably no downside really mm-hmm. um, I mean geez we I mean we came through a pandemic and you know we we didn't we didn't disappear and mm-hmm. and we were and, and and all of our customers closed their doors we didn't mm-hmm. disappear uh, so probably very little downside kind of the way we're pricing uh and there might be some real upside um as long as you're uh, you know an investor with a bit of a horizon mm-hmm. i think it's a great situation to take a look at you know mm-hmm. from my perspective Fantastic. Well, on that note, we'll wrap it up. Uh, We've been speaking to CEO Cameron Watt of InTouch Insight, INX on the Venture Exchange. Um, Cameron, it's great to catch up with you and I appreciate your time today and I look forward to catching up with you uh, in the not too distant future. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you.